Amen. Uh, good morning. Uh, God bless. Amen. How many of you were authentically blessed last night? Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Okay. Um, tonight we're going to continue. Uh, we're going to continue with part two of what we did last night. I'm going to do something a little bit different tonight. Um, I want to give a few moments to let people testify to those of you that you authentically feel that generational curses was broken or you had an encounter with the Holy Spirit uh, with the Holy Spirit yesterday how many of you had an encounter with the Holy Spirit yesterday oh, Lord Jesus how many of you be honest that was the first time you heard that revelation that revelation of that degree okay how many of you felt like there were scales falling off your mind like there was like you're saying my Lord I never saw that like that Amen. All right. Um, deliverance, as I said, is not a power encounter. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a truth. It's a truth encounter. All right. So, um, what I want to do tonight um, is I want to allow, uh, not long. I don't want you preaching. <laughs> All right. But there's a level of deliverance that can only come through test testifying. It seals the deal. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their test so there is a dimension of deliverance that seals it from heaven um, when you make a public confession it's the, the same dynamic for deliverance is applied to salvation what did Jesus say if you confess me before men I will confess you before who before the father or rather before the courtroom that's what it actually means do you see how the courtroom fits in everything Deliverance is the same way. Um, and the reason why I want you to testify is one, um, you don't have to be ashamed of getting free. What makes us ashamed is religion and religious people. So we just don't testify, you know. Second, I am aware that not everybody got delivered yesterday. I am fully aware that there are one or two that you're kind of still pushing your way through. You're pushing your way through. Uh, maybe yesterday there was a, a mental paradigm shift and yet you didn't make the connection in the experience um, and um, sometimes someone's testimony um, can help you thrust you um, into that place of you know what if, if they got delivered I can get delivered as well all right so I, I'm, I've, I've done this honestly speaking today I'm gonna do a little bit more teaching can I teach really well yesterday I did a lot of teaching too but today I'm really gonna do we're gonna really kind of do some teaching um, tonight we're gonna do some fire preaching Okay, so, so. <laughs> oh my God, Amen. Um, uh, so, uh, um, be be prepared. All right. So, as I was saying, was that someone's experience can help you kind of get connected. I've done over five hundred, and I'm being modest. I'm being very modest. Um, I've done more than five hundred deliverance sessions one-on-one -on -one sessions how many of you seen some of my videos some of my videos if you go on YouTube they, I, I'm, I'm a lot more effective when I sit down with someone and I hear what's going on here and I could get the de well heaven can get the demon to manifest and then you get and you get set free all right mass deliverance is an awakening everybody gets awakened you know so I, I've learned a thing or two and one of the things that I've learned is that not everybody gets delivered because they're dealing with whatever it is. Sometimes they have an expectation. Here's what, here's what I'm hoping that would happen. Hoping that would happen um, is you have to be trained in order, in order to receive. I know that sounds really crazy, but some of us don't know how to receive. We just don't know how to receive. So when, you, when you say, we say, touch, touch, you're like, what does that mean? What do you mean touch, 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 touch? You know, like, what, 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 do I fall? Do I stand up? Do I rock back and forth? Do I go side to side, you know? And you know how, uh, you know, how many of you know? And then it gets frustrating. And then, and then how many of you know after that the devil starts working on your head? Saying, oh, God touched them but didn't touch me. You know, and then you start going through a season of rejection and, and loneliness. And, and halfway through the preaching, you just want to go home. I've been there. I've been there. And the root cause of that is religion. It's modern evangelicalism. There's no way denominationalism has taught us. There's, there's, there's a certain way to receive. And if you're not, how do you know there's millions of ways? There's a multitude of ways to receive. A multitude of ways to receive. You know, um, so... Um, but testifying awakens uh, everyone's 
excitement that you weren't the only one or maybe you were them but didn't get to cross over to kind of get to that place. So um, um, so I want to allow a couple of you to testify, so prepare yourself. But if you feel you're going to testify, make sure you see us after this session because we don't want 50 people who lined up talking about, I got, I got a testimony, you know. But we want to be able to hear first exactly what happened and then we'll kind of uh, coordinate it of how we can let you to I do this in every session I do this in every session it's the most effective it mo is the most effective uh, uh, session all right what I'm also thinking that maybe I'll do this morning I, I really feel like I need to interpret dreams I want to do some live dream interpretation there's demons hiding in your dreams how many of you are having nightmares and demons in your sleep how many of you are having a hard time sleeping you know, so sometimes there are there are gateways of the demonic um, that kind of that kind of kind of go in there. Amen. All right, we're gonna talk about deliverance this morning. How many of you are excited? Let's get into some deliverance. Amen. We're talking about deliverance. All right. Tonight we'll continue with generational curses, and I really sense like I have to confront water spirits. I'm not exactly sure why the Holy Spirit is telling me to confront water spirits. And I come from the U.S. In evangelical churches, you don't say water spirit. They have no idea what you're talking about. They're like, we don't deal with that, sir. You know, But uh, this morning, I really feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me water spirits. And I don't know if that makes, does that make sense to some, some, some people? Water, water spirits? Okay. All right. So, um, amen. All right. All right. So get your pads and pens out. Let's jump in for a little bit. Let's jump in for a little bit. Amen. I'm going to show you some different dimensions of, dimensions of deliverance. Okay. All right. So write this down. All right, deliverance is not fighting the darkness, but it's turning on the light. Write that down. Deliverance is not fighting the darkness. It's turning on the light. When the light is turned on, whatever is of the darkness by default gets exposed. So this allows you and I to bypass hours and hours of deliverance of trying to figure out what's there and it narrows it down to a small time frame to be able to identify and say there's a demon confront the demon and then cast it out and remove it out and then close the door and help the person keep the door keep the door closed so deliverance is not being demon conscious we're not looking for every demon within the bloodline what we're doing is we're depending on the holy spirit to reveal the root of a problem write that down we're depending on the Holy Spirit to reveal the root of a problem and the wisdom for the strategy that's needed to solve that problem. So this removes the whole dynamic of being so demon, 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 darkness, 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 darkness. Um, and there's a dependence on the Holy Spirit to reveal what's the root of the problem. Now, this changes the dynamic because I guarantee you for many of us yesterday we were probably saying I'm already a Christian I already renounced the idolatry in my bloodline I already did all of that stuff the issue is not we're going chasing the demons in your bloodline what we're wanting the Holy Spirit to do is we want the Holy Spirit to turn on the light inside of us and whatever is there whatever is there gets exposed and then we can resolve it how many of you understand what I'm saying okay this changes the whole dynamic so therefore, this includes, this allows everyone to be involved in the deliverance session. One of the great things that I experienced yesterday is when I travel the U.S., it's very different, all right? The U.S. churches deal with reason, logic, fundamentalism, their version of Christianity. So the vast majority of evangelical churches do not even believe in demons. They believe in Jesus, but they don't even believe in demons. Now, how does that work? You know, like, I, don't, I have no idea how does that work. Um, so I spend more time having to prove deliverance as opposed to engaging in deliverance. I didn't feel that last night. I didn't feel that. I totally felt like, man, of God, yes, we believe in demons, sir. We believe, we believe in this thing, you know. All right. But what I did sense is that there are other things that are hindering many of you of entering in. Now, I'll get into that a little bit more tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll kind of really kind of get into what are some of the hindrances that are kind of in place to help you uh, uh, get, uh, get delivered. All right, so, okay. So the Holy Spirit's role in deliverance is to reveal the what of a problem, the root of a problem. And once you understand the root of a problem, 
um, then the wisdom of God kicks in to help you and I know which strategy can be used to remove the demon or to resolve or to resolve the problem. Let me give you an example. Yesterday there was some of you manifesting and I guarantee you that I know for a fact that some of it, large percentage of it was, was demon, but others it was you need some healing in your soul. How many of you know that a hug could heal somebody? Or how about this? Some people just need to be heard. They spent their whole life being and feeling voiceless. And all they need is a few minutes of somebody being able to say, I see you. I hear you. And the thing leaves. Amen. So, now watch this. That requires you to turn on the light. If you turn on the light and you don't see that, you'll address every, everything as a demon. And sometimes some people just need uh, a moment of human interaction of somebody not judging them and, and loving on them unconditionally in the grace of God, completely, uh, completely healing them. Amen. So, all right. So the Holy Spirit reveals the root of a problem and then he gives us the wisdom and the strategy of how to solve that problem. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 12. Watch this. I'm going to kind of get into some stuff and then we're going to shake the devil up this morning. Hallelujah. How many of you want to shake the devil up this morning? Hallelujah. All right. So teaching and demonstration. That's how I do. Teaching and demonstration. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Matthew chapter 12. Watch this. I'm going to show you uh, the dynamic. Watch this. This is going to, you're going to get a powerful revelation today. Jump down. Jump down. Okay, jump down in Matthew chapter 12 to verse 25. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. Watch this. Okay. Jesus, Matt, you can put it on the screen, New Living Translation. All right. Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town or a family splintered by feuding will do what? Will fall apart. All right? And if Satan is casting out Satan, he is divided and fighting against himself. I can have church with that right there. That's a whole, that, this right, that little statement right there is all legal stuff. That's like you prosecuting yourself in the courtroom. Your Honor, I, I, I call myself as a witness. And then you sit there and you prosecute yourself and then condemn yourself. It, it doesn't work like that in the kingdom, in the kingdom of darkness. All right. So look, look at this. All right, look at this. Verse 27. If I am empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcists? They cast out demons too. So they will condemn you for what you have said. Look at this. But if I am doing what? Casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is what? Okay, watch this. The reason why deliverance is not effective in the churches is because effective deliverance can only be done through the administration of the Holy Spirit, not the Word. Let me say that again. If I am casting out demons by what? Not by the Word but by the what? But by the Spirit of God. Okay, so, so when we say that we are kingdom, being kingdom does not mean being Jesus-centered. It means being Holy Spirit-centered. Jesus makes it legal for us to be Holy Spirit-centered. Did you catch that revelation? That is why there is a display of emotionalism. Or how about this? Have you ever gotten stuck helping someone get set free? Because you're trying to find a scripture on how to do it? Well, I'm here to tell you there's only five instances in Scripture in the Gospels where Jesus interacted with demons. And it's not enough because we've dealt with more than five people. Okay, so then watch this. So then what and how does effective deliverance take place? It's not with what would Jesus do. It's do what Jesus did. Write that down. It's not WWJD. What would Jesus do? It's do what Jesus did. Okay, what did Jesus do? He depended on the Holy Spirit. So if Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit, who do we depend on when we're conducting deliverance? Holy Spirit. So who 
and what should we be operating in or how is true deliverance manifested through whom to the spirit so if i am casting out demons by the spirit of god then the kingdom of god has come what upon you okay so when we say things like kingdom 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 what does it mean it means full manifestation of the holy spirit operating on the earth that's what it means now many of us don't know that because evangelicalism or being religious just keeps us word senses just the word just the word just the word the word but you can't have the word without the spirit so jesus said you must be born again of the word and of the spirit okay now let me just kind of drive this point in watch this i'm just going to show you how effective deliverance is done through intimacy with the holy spirit see yesterday i helped you remove the demon this morning i'm going to help you get filled with the holy spirit see because if you're not filled with the holy spirit the unclean spirit what does it do it comes right back okay so full manifestation of the holy full manifestation of the kingdom is the demonstration of the holy spirit can somebody say amen okay now watch this i'm gonna show you how this works the bible doesn't call it the gifts of jesus it's called the gifts of the spirit the bible doesn't even call it the fruit of jesus walk therefore by the fruit of jesus what does it say the fruits of the spirit did you catch it you're not even called the temple of jesus did you catch what i just said you're not called the temple of jesus know ye not that you are the temple of jesus it does not say that it says know ye not that you are the temple of the holy spirit did you catch that ah. see 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 watch this watch this watch this in the book of acts jesus only spoke one time he spoke to ananias about paul and to paul about ananias how many of you read that right he only spoke once but if you read your bible every chapter watch this every chapter in the bible in the book of acts every chapter you could go read this in whatever version in every chapter of the book of acts there's this one phrase and the holy spirit said and the holy spirit said the spirit of god said now watch this how many of you remember in the book of acts prophet agabus there's a prophet in the bible called agabus when he prophesied you can read this he did not say thus saith the lord he said this thus saith the spirit of god do you see how the holy spirit is infused in everything that has to do with the kingdom okay okay watch this now what i'm about to say is gonna is gonna rub you the wrong way okay so what does it mean to be religious it means to be only word driven and not spirit driven so if everything is just the word just the word just the word just the word amen you have half the gospel but you don't have the kingdom the kingdom is not the word the kingdom is the spirit of god and how that is why watch this that is why jesus said i've already cleaned you through the word go to jerusalem and wait to what power on then the holy spirit comes down and now you can be able to walk in the kingdom did you catch what i just said all of this has everything to do with deliverance why because deliverance can only happen through the spirit healing can only happen through the spirit did you catch that revelation everything is through the spirit everything is through the holy spirit so therefore when we say kingdom it's a full manifestation of the holy spirit watch this when agabus prophesied he said thus saith the spirit of the lord watch this in the new testament now i'm trying to i'm trying to change your how many of you are, this feels like something like, yes i see it okay watch this in the new testament jesus doesn't ordain anybody when paul and barnabas were separated for the ministry what does the bible say the holy spirit said separate me paul 
and Barnabas. Now, what is Jesus' role? Very simple. In this dispensation, he makes deliverance possible through what? Being your high priest and intercessor in heaven. But who enacts and carries out the prayers of Jesus for you is who? The Holy Spirit. So therefore, you should be presently seeking an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And how many of you want an encounter with the Holy Spirit this morning? We want an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen to me. When I learned that revelation, well, first of all, let me just share this. Jesus doesn't get jealous if you pay attention to the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus is not like us. They're ignoring me now. <laughs> you know, and I'm grieved. Why? Because they only, they only listen to you, sir. You know, Jesus don't get like that. Why? Because Jesus is the Holy Spirit. How many of you know the Holy Spirit is God? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So it, the, the, the Godhead is already there. But each one has a particular function. So watch this. So, so how do you stay free? As many as are led by the Spirit, they will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So it's all Spirit-led. Okay, watch this. How many of you have ever felt weak? You've ever felt weak? Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Jesus doesn't help you when you're weak. The Holy Spirit does. Romans chapter 8 says... Even in your weakness, the Holy Spirit makes what? Intercession for you with groanings that cannot be uttered. So when you're feeling weak, it's the Holy Spirit again. Ah, I got excited. Do you see? So watch this. Watch this. So now did you see? I was talking to a pastor and we were, I was talking about USA Christianity that I've come to the conclusion that the Christianity in the States is not true biblical Christianity. The majority of it is, but rather it's fundamentalism, their version of Christianity. So because everything is Jesus-centered, Jesus-centered, and yes, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father but by me salvation through Jesus but kingdom through the Holy Spirit see so once you get saved what are you to walk in now watch this watch this watch this so the kingdom is who Holy Spirit what did Jesus tell you to seek first <laughs> but you're busy seeking his righteousness what did Jesus say seek ye first the kingdom the kingdom is what spirit of god and his righteousness and then what then all these things but what did he tell you to seek first kingdom or rather seek first the holy spirit see so this is how you lose your deliverance you know the fastest way to lose your deliverance is get around other believers who are religious They'll talk you right out of that. Right? So the way you maintain and obtain and maintain and get free is through the presence of the, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Hallelujah. Watch this. Jesus, he speaks to the church, but actually he writes letters. I mean, no, he writes a letter. The seven letters. But notice how at the end of those letters, he doesn't even sign the letter. He says this. Let him that hath ears to hear. Let them hear what Jesus is saying. What does he say? Let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Okay, watch this, watch this. In the book of Revelation, in the end of time, Notice how Jesus didn't say come. It says Jesus and the bride say come. It does not say that. It says what? The spirit and the bride say come. Did you catch it? So it's all dispensation of the Holy Spirit. That is why the Bible says do not grieve the Holy Spirit. 
all right, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. How many of you can say amen? Hallelujah. Now, how many of you know this is, this is new to you? This is the first time you've seen it in that light. All right? All right. And that is why we're stuck because we're looking for particular blueprint and, and what you should be seeking is the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you don't have the presence of the Holy Spirit, when you confront the demon, the demon looks at you and goes, Peter, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Who are you filled with? Okay, watch this. I mean, no, that's good stuff right there. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, turn me back to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, verse 28. Verse 28. Look at this. Verse 28, Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. But if I am casting out demons by the who? Spirit of God, then what? Then the kingdom of God is what? Surely has arrived among you. Next verse, watch this. Look at this. For who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man like Satan and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger. Someone who could do what? Tie him up and then plunder his goods or plunder his house. Okay, so how does this happen? Very simple. The one stronger than Satan is not you. It's the Holy Spirit that's inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is. So who is the one that's greater in you? It's the Holy Spirit. And keep in mind the Holy Spirit is who? Jesus. Okay, okay, now watch this. Is this good stuff? This is great theology. This is great teaching. Okay, watch this. <laughs> this is good stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at this. Okay, watch this. Okay, turn with me to 1 Corinthians 14. Now, we, now I'm gonna, we're going to get really deeper into this uh, deliverance thing. Okay, I'm just trying to show you. I'm trying to show you something. Okay, okay, watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians 14. I'm going to show you something that's going to blow you away, and then we're going to call you up, and then we're going to have church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. First Corinthians 14. Watch this. Hallelujah. Chapter 14, verse 7. New Living Translation, verse 7. I want to show you something. All right? And then we're going to lead to demons hiding in body parts. And then we're going to... How many know demons can hide in a body part? Okay. One of the next hindrances that I see for people getting free is that we're not targeted in our deliverance prayers. We tend to be very generic. Come out. You have to be specifically targeted. And how many know there are demons? As a matter of fact, last week I was in Ohio and the, young, the, the entrepreneur from Bahamas actually said that he felt the demon running around inside of him. Every time I tried to put my hand, he felt that it was running around, shoulder all running around. See, and then eventually I grabbed it and I said, you unclean spirit, get out of the hands now in Jesus' name. And then it came out, okay? So watch this. I'm going to show you something. Okay, look at this. 1 Corinthians 14, verse verse 7 okay now watch this write this down in order for us to have effective communication write this down in order for us to have effective communication the words have to mean the same thing for both of us let me say that again in order for us to have effective communication the words have to mean the same thing for both of us what does that mean concepts if you and I don't have the same concept, then what you and I would have would be called a misconception. Which means if I say, pass me this, what is this? What is this right here? This is a phone. Okay, that means the word, this means the same thing for both of us. The problem is that we don't know what the words are meaning to people. So when we're throwing out things, we don't know what they're amening to. So, what, so, so how many of you have ever had a hard time hearing from God? Let's be honest. How many of you have a hard time hearing from God? Let me tell you something. God speaks to you every day. You just don't have the right concepts in your mind to be able to understand exactly what he is saying. Did you catch it? Okay. Now, in order for there to be the right concept, God has to wait for the right prototype. I caught, now this one I'm telling you is actually in my book. It's called prototype timing, which means God has to wait to find the right thing to best represent what he wants to say. So therefore, when he says this, 
you understand exactly what that means. Now watch this. So the reason why you and I struggle with can a Christian have a demon is because all of those statements, the words do not mean the same thing for everybody. And I'm going to tell you why. For the average, for the average Christian, when I say get deliverance to them, they think deliverance means come to the altar, accept Jesus as your Savior. And once you accept Jesus as your Savior, um, you are delivered from the kingdom of darkness and translated to the kingdom of God. Okay, that is level one deliverance. Because deliverance doesn't end at the cross, it begins at the cross. When I say deliverance or kingdom deliverance, what I mean is not just accept Jesus as your Savior and have him break the power of sin. What we're talking about is finding the root cause of a problem, finding where the demon or the curse is lingering, sever the generational curse, order the demon out, and decree that God would do something brand new in the bloodline and therefore creating a brand new lifestyle be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and then afterwards everything changes it's a big difference but i'm gonna tell you why that does not happen watch this even lifeless instruments like the flute or the harp must play what the notes clearly or no one will recognize the melody see See, watch this. See, look at this. Next verse. Watch this. Watch this. Look at this. Even if the bugler, and if the bugler doesn't sound a what? Clear call. How will the soldiers know they are being called for battle? Next verse. Watch this. Look what this opens up saying. It's the same for you. Okay. There's a reason why I do teaching before demonstration. Because I want to make sure that when I make the altar call, you know what I meant and therefore what to do when you come up here on how to get free. Do you see what I'm saying? Now watch this. What is it saying here? It's the same for all of us. If you speak to people in words they don't understand, how will they know what you are saying? You might as well be talking into empty space. Look at the next verse. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. What I'm doing today is I'm changing your language. How many of you were blessed by what I just said about the dispensation of the Holy Spirit in kingdom? How many of you, be honest with you, this is the first time you saw it and heard it like that? Guess what? So now every time I say kingdom, you're not thinking kingdom. You're thinking Holy Spirit. See? Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Now watch this. There are many different languages in the world. Every language has meaning next verse watch this but if i don't understand a language and this is where religious and kingdom we're all fighting about because we don't we're, we're saying the same thing we're understanding different languages right okay i'm gonna give you an example i was told pastor today when i said i'm gonna give you an example how this worked yesterday <laughs> when i said not all sin leads unto death I remember when I said that yesterday. And what does not lead unto death mean? You don't go to hell for it. Because that word death means eternal separation. But how many of you know we were not taught that? We were taught everything is the same. Paul, John said in the next word, all unrighteousness is sin. But then he said, but all sin does not lead unto death. Then he said, there is a sin that leads unto death death and then he said there is a sin that doesn't lead to death okay so this opens the playing field it took me 15 years to learn that why because i thought all sin leads unto death see so so watch this so watch this so when people sinned i'd write them off as condemned forever and then god restores them never write off a backslidden preacher because when God gets their life right, God will make their life be more fruitful than they when they were before they backslid. See? 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 Okay, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And if you don't know this, watch this. If you look at it all in the same, now all sin is unrighteousness. Okay, but watch this. If you view it 
level the playing field, then it will be a hard time letting people be used by God. Because how many of you know we're all sinful somewhere? But God uses us. Watch this. I said that yesterday and you could hear a pin drop with that one. But then I showed you through the word. And guess what happened? Your language changed. Watch this. But if I don't understand A, I will be A to someone who, and the one who will be a foreigner to me. Next verse. Watch this. This is the second time he said that. The same is true for you. Since you are so eager to have the special abilities, the what? Or you're desiring for the kingdom to manifest. Give, seek those that will do what? Strengthen the whole church. Okay, turn me to John chapter 2. Now I wrote that so that you could see something and then John chapter 2. Watch this. Watch this. It's going to get really good. Hallelujah. John chapter 2, verse 18. Okay. So when the words don't mean the same thing, what are we to each other? Foreigners. Just sounds good. Watch this. But the Jewish leaders did what? Demanded. What are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a sign to prove it. Next verse. Watch this. Watch this. All right, Jesus replied. What did he say? Destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up. Next verse. What? They exclaimed. It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and how is it that you can rebuild it in three days? Look at the next verse. The word didn't mean the same thing. Uh, look, 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 Did you, do you see it? See it? He said, destroy this temple in three days, raise it up. And they thought temple, and he meant. Okay, watch this, watch this. I just gave you a new language. Every time you read the word temple in the Bible, you should think body. See? See? Okay, so you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the body of the Holy Spirit. See? Okay, watch this. Okay, so, so, okay. So now the word temple for all of us means the same thing as it does to Jesus. So temple means what? Body. Okay, I'm going to deal with a little bit more of this later today. So I'm trying to show you how, how we don't get delivered because we don't understand the language. Okay, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Okay. Go to 2nd, second, second Corinthians chapter 2. 2nd Corinthians chapter 2. 2nd Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to show you something. Is this good? Okay, I'm leading to calling you up. And we're going to have some fun. All right. All right. Well, pastor, it's too early for that. Perfect. We catch the demons off guard. Demons are still waking up. <sighs> what? Come out. Just woke up. <laughs> Watch this. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you something. So temple means what? Body. Keep that in mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse 10. Okay, watch this. When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive him, whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit. Next verse. So that Satan will not do what? When I'm not smart it art us because we are not what put in King James version give it to me in King James look at this same verse 11 in the King James lest Satan should do what take advantage because we are not 
ignorant of his what? Okay, so Paul is saying that Satan can take advantage of you through what? Ignorance. Ignorance, which means this, which means this, that God will allow it if you don't learn it. So if you say, God protect me, God protect, he will protect you. But if you are ignorant of Satan's devices, what will he do to you? He will take advantage. He will take advantage. All right. So therefore, it re so therefore, what it should be important is that you and I become familiar with his devices. So therefore, he doesn't do what? Take advantage. Let me show you something. Look at this. Hallelujah. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Same book, chapter 11. Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. So Satan can do what with us? Take advantage if you're ignorant of his devices. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Uh, the pastors have informed me that events like this, deliverance, hardly have ever been done on the island. That means Satan has been taking advantage of New Zealand for a long time. They told me that this is the first that they've ever even seen this in over 25 years of ministry. That means Satan, at least for 25 years, has been taking advantage of people. Why? Because the church is ignorant of his devices. When the church doesn't incorporate deliverance into its program of the DNA of its mission, a vision of the house, watch this, though we preach Jesus, the devil will also be taking advantage at the same time. That's a heavy statement. That means New Zealand needs a lot of work. How many of you, be honest, this is the first time you've ever even been to a deliverance conference, a deliverance, and you've been saved a long time. Okay, so this lets me know Satan has been taking advantage here a long time. So when I hear Christians say that's impossible, I can't have no demon, I have the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, you do have the Holy Spirit, but the devil's also taking advantage of areas in your life. Okay, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 1. Let's read it with verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. I hope you will put up a little more of my foolishness. Please bear with me. Watch this. For I am jealous for you with a jealousy of God himself. I promised you a pure bride to one husband, Christ. Next verse. Watch this. But what? I fear that somehow your pure and what? Undivided what? Devotion to Christ will be what? Stop right there. Notice how he didn't say your devotion will become sinful. He said what? Corrupted. Watch this. L let that sink in. Watch this. I'd rather know that I'm in sin because I know that I did it than be deceived thinking that I'm not in sin but I really am in sin. See? I'd rather be in sin than be deceived. Because when I'm in sin, I know I'm wrong. But when I'm deceived, I'm wrong, but really think I'm right. Now watch this. Look what it says here. What can happen to your devotion? It can be what? Corrupted. Watch this. Corrupted does not mean sinful. It means a slow decay. Which means a slow degradation. Which means it slowly wears away getting corrupted which means it could take 10 years and then when you finally get to a place of corruption you can't uncorrupt it once it's corrupted it's a nature change on that that is why watch this that is why Eve could talk to the serpent and nothing happened but as she kept talking to the serpent something got corrupted do you see it so in the beginning it's fine but as you keep dealing with it you don't feel anything but after a while your devotion gets corrupted it becomes corrupted and then when it gets fully corrupted you mess up and then don't know that you messed up because she ate and nothing happened and then judgment came later okay 
Paul was saying, I worry about you getting more corrupted by the devil than anything else. He says, I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will become corrupted. By what? By the cunning ways of the serpent. Watch this. Watch this. Turn with me to Ezekiel 43. Is this good? Okay, two more instances of scripture, maybe three, and then we'll call, we'll call you up. Okay, watch this. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 43. Watch this. Ezekiel 43, quickly. Verse 10. Ezekiel 43, verse 10. Now I'm going to show you how we get deceived and demons come in. Son of man, describe to the people of Israel what? The temple I have what? Okay. Temple means what? So switch it. Son of man, describe to the children of Israel the body I have shown you. Watch this. So they will be what? Ashamed of all the sin and let them do what? Watch this. Let them do what? Study. It's planned. Next verse. Watch this. Watch this. And they will be ashamed of what they have done. Look at this. Describe to them all the specifications of the what? Of the body, including its what? Entrances and... Okay, watch this. Here is where we mess up. Because modern evangelicalism only teaches us to guard the door. But you are a house full of windows. You are a house full of a back door. There's other ways to get in the house other than the door. So when we tell somebody you need deliverance, we say that's impossible because I've been at the door all day. The Bible says the thief never comes through the door. The thief never comes through the door. So you're sitting there saying, I'm guarding the door. That's impossible. The devil hasn't been here. The devil never comes through the door. He comes. The Bible says the thief climbs up some other way. See? So you've been saying, I'm going to church. I don't need deliverance. I'm, 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 I've been in church a long time. That's not how the devil is climbing in. He doesn't climb in through the door. He finds another way. Watch this. Watch this. And these other ways, the Bible calls them what? Entrances and and everything else about it. Tell them about its what? Decrees and what? Let me show you how this works. A decree and a law. What we were talking about yesterday, courtroom, right? Okay, which means the law will work even on a bad day. I'm going to show you how we get this wrong. How many of you have ever prayed, Lord, be honest, I've done it. Lord, I give you my eyes Control my eyes, Lord. I give them to you. How many of you ever prayed something like that, right? God says, I won't do it. You control your eyes. See? You want to know why? Because the Bible says the eye never gets tired of seeing. God will never control the entrances and the exits. You do it. See? So when you say, how many of you ever prayed this? Lord, take control of my life. God says, no, you take control of your life by crucifying it daily. See? That's why he, what's this? That's, you know, have you ever prayed this? Lord, stop me before I do it. Stop me, Lord. And how many of you know he never stopped you? How many of you know he let you go right ahead and fornicate? You go right ahead and mess up. And then you cry out, God, what happened? Why? Because God don't guard the temple. You guard the temple. Do you see what I'm saying? Which means the body will work if you work it. Okay, look at this. Look at this. Write down all these specifications and decrees as they what? Watch. So they will be sure to remember and follow them. Next verse. Watch this. Look at this. And this is what? The basic law of the body. What? Absolute holiness. See, what does absolute holiness mean? It does matter what you watch on TV. Because there are demons coming in through the eyes. 
Yes, it does. But we get religious and say, oh, that's legalism. No. It does matter what you listen to. There's no such thing as it's neutral. If it's not of God, it's a vehicle on which the enemy can ride in and secretly come in your ears. So you're sitting, you're sitting here fighting us saying, that's impossible. You're being religious. And God is saying, we're not being religious. Your temple is wide open. Do you see? Watch this. So it does matter if you keep a little picture in honor of something on your wall. It does matter. Because next thing you know, things, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Okay, okay, watch this, watch this, watch this. And this is the basic law of the temple. Absolute holiness. The entire top of the mountain where the temple is built is what? Holy. Yes, this is the basic law of the of the body, of the body, of the body. Okay, is this good? Is this good? Is this good? Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, okay. So the question I have is this, two more verses, and is this, what are the entrances and exits? What are they? Turn with me to 2 Timothy, quickly. Is this real good? Hallelujah. Because I could come and cast out your demons, but if, if you don't understand how to keep, maintain your freedom, you're going to get bound within six months from now. You're going to go right back to it. See, I'm helping you get delivered. Second Timothy, watch this, chapter 2. Watch this. I'm going to show you something that's going to be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Second Timothy, chapter <laughs> 2. Yeah, Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 25. New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Good stuff. Watch this. Watch this. Look at this. I'm going to show you something. It's good teaching. Good teaching. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will do what? Change those people's hearts. Focus on heart. And they will do what? Learn. So the heart has to learn. Okay. Next verse. Watch this. Okay. Then they will do what? Come to their what? Come to their what? And do what? From the what? Okay. For they have been what? By him to do what? Okay. So where do the demons hide? In your senses. And when they're in the senses, they make you do whatever they want. Did you catch that? It's not in your spirit. Your spirit belongs to Jesus. They don't come in your spirit or your heart. Where do they hide? In your senses. Why? Because the senses are controlled by you, not by the Holy Spirit. You have to deny yourself daily. You have to crucify your flesh. Okay, okay. So where does the devil hide? Where do the demons hide? In your, okay, what are your senses? Taste, touch, smell, hear, and see. So it does matter what you watch. It does matter what you hear. It does matter what you eat. It does matter what you feel. And it does matter what you smell. Did you catch it? That's where the devil is hiding. And, we have him, and because we don't know that, he makes us do whatever he wants. You ever get demonized? I've been demonized before. It's in my book when I got delivered. You ever act out and can't stop yourself? What's making you do that? That's not coming from you. That's a demon in your senses making you do that. Did you catch it? Okay. 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 So watch this. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. We're going to breeze through this verse. I'm not going to explain this verse. Uh, we're going to go to the next one. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Look what it says. Okay. Hallelujah. Give me a second. Uh, King James. King James of this verse. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. King James. Hallelujah. Having therefore these what? Dearly beloved, let us do what? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the and the uh, perfecting what? Holiness in the fear of God. So this lets me know my body can be filthy also and my spirit can be filthy. 
Watch this. Watch this. Romans chapter 6. And then after this, one more verse. We're done. Romans chapter 6. New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Watch this. Watch this. Romans 6 verse 12. Romans 6 verse 12. Romans 6 verse 12. Look at this. Watch this. Do not let what? Control the what? The way you live. Do not give in desires. Look at the next verse. Look at this. Wow, look at this verse. I just told you demons can hide in a body part. Do not let any part of your body. Let me say that again. That means, yes, you can't have a demon in your eyes. If your eyes is given over to something and you're ignorant, the thing will come in and will dwell there. It doesn't mean that you're controlled by it, but it means in that one area. It's there. Watch this. Do not let any what? Part of your body be, be what? Be an instrument of what? Evil to do what? Serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely. Means, means every part of your body. Completely. Okay. Th that means, watch this. Deliverance is not just in your mind and in your heart. Sometimes your body needs deliverance. How many of you have ever had a craving to do something after you got delivered from it? People do that all the... Okay, I'm going to give you an example of this. I have a friend of mine. He's a pastor of a church. Um, and um, I'm going to give you a story of what happened to me with him one time. One time we were talking in the car and he told me. This is a pastor, really big church. He told me, oh yeah, I used to be gay. You know, he said, oh yeah, I used to be gay. You know, and I know that lifestyle so I can see it from afar off. And I said, Stop! I didn't even know you were gay, man. And then I said, I never even saw it. And this is what he said. He said, because when I got, this is what he said. He said, because when I got delivered, I told God to restore masculinity to my body. That never hit me like that. So watch this. So gay people, the demon leaves, but they still look gay. You want to know Why? Because there's residual on the body parts. So sometimes a person can get delivered, but there's residual on the body still. So when they get delivered, whole deliverance means don't just remove the demon, restore their flesh. God, restore their body. Demons, get out of the face, get out of the eyes, get out of the hands, get out of the legs now, in Jesus' name. And restore the eye and the face back to its original design. How many know what I'm talking about? How many of you ever looked at somebody and said to yourself, man, I think they might be gay. I think they might be gay. And then you said, nah, they're not gay. And then you find out 10 years later, they were gay. And you go, wow, I saw that, but why? Because, now watch this, it doesn't mean they are practicing gay. It just means there's residual on the body part. Did you catch it? Watch this. Now I'm going to just tell it to you. Now you know why Jesus said, if your eye causes you to sin. If your hand causes you to sin. If your feet cause you to sin. Why? Because sometimes it's not a demon in your soul or in your heart. It's a demon on that body part. Now, God is not saying cut your eye out. He's not saying, but he is letting us know. Okay, watch. I'm going to even go a step further with that revelation. It was that good revelation right there. Jesus said, how can you take the speck out of my eye? And you have a, that's deliverance. The speck and the log is rank in the demonic. The speck is lower ranking demon. The log is bigger rank. He said, first, remove the log out of your own eye. Then you will 
see clearly. To be able to take out the speck in my eye. That verse is not about hypocrisy. It's about deliverance. Because if you deal with the bigger, the lesser, it comes easy. Let me give you one more. Luke 11, last, last. Luke 11, hallelujah. Luke 11, Luke 11, watch this. Luke 11, is this really good? Okay, watch this. Look at this. Give it to me in King James and then we'll read it again in New Living Translation. Luke 11, turn it up. Musicians, turn it up, turn it up a little bit. You can start playing softly. We're going we're gonna to jump in right after this. Hallelujah. Because we're going to remove demon out of body parts today. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you in some renouncing. And we're going to just demon out of my eyes, out of my ears. We're gonna, it, it's going to be a little extensive, but we're going to focus on various parts of the body. All right? How many of you want to get demons out of your eyes? Demons out of your ears. You want to know what? Sometimes we deal with gossip because there's demons on our ears that attract that stuff. Okay, watch this. Luke 11. Luke 11. Verse 34. Verse 34. Watch this. Luke 11, verse 34. Hallelujah. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. First, let me give, give it to me in, in New Living Translation first. Then we read in King James. Watch this. Watch this. Look at this. New Living Translation. Same verse. Your eye is a lamp. Wait, 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 wait. Don't just read that. Okay, okay. How does your body get full of light? What's the area of the body used to fill your body with light? It's not prayer. It's your eyes. You keep thinking, Lord, light up my life. Lord, light up my life. Shadabo, shadabasa. And God says, you want your life to light up? Clean your eyes. I'm showing you I'm helping you study the, the plan, the temple. So how many of you want your body to be full of light? Then God says, get delivered in your eyes. Which means, watch this, if your eyes are dark based on what you watch, then your body's full of darkness. So if you want your life to light up, it's not fasting. It's not prayer. It's clean, your, clean what you watch. Clean what you're looking at. If you want to operate in this level of deliverance, God will demand that you give up television completely. There's no way around it. No way around. I'm talking about this level I'm walking in. God, what I was telling them, they asked me, how do you get to that rank in the spirit? I said, there's only one way. You got to give up something to walk in this dimension. God will say, now there's nothing wrong with television, but he would say, I don't want you watching it no more clean your eyes it's so easy to prophesy when your eyes are clean but when your eyes full of movies and Netflix and hours of secular music and stuff that don't take you to hell then by the time you go to prophesy I'm hearing a word of the Lord but I'm also hearing foolishness okay your eye is a lamp okay temple means what lamp does not mean lamp it means window your eye is the window to your body. When your window is good, your whole body is filled with. But when it is bad, your body, not your spirit, your body is filled with what? Oh, so your body can be filled with what? darkness watch this next verse quickly look at this look at this this. make sure that the light you think you have is not really darkness give it to me in King James version verse 34 stand to your feet everyone hallelujah hallelujah thank you father Look at this. Look at this. The light of the body is the... Therefore, when your eye is... Your whole body is also full of... But when your eye is... 
your whole body is also full of next verse take heed therefore that the light which you which is in thee be not darkness next verse if your whole body therefore be having where are the demons hiding in that dark part look what it says if your whole body therefore be full of light having no part the whole shall be full of light as when the bright shining of a candle does give it light today what we're going to do in this session we're going to remove all dark parts out of your life let's come up front let's fill this altar area again hallelujah